Is everyone in West Virginia a coal miner? Is everyone there an uneducated hillbilly? And does everyone in West Virginia eat coon for supper? We're going to talk about those things and a whole lot more. So let's pull up our britches. I reckon we're going to unbox the state of West Virginia. A coal mine. Of course, we're going to begin our discovery of the mountain state in the dark, damp coal mine. Come on now. If there's anything that West Virginia is known for, it's the coal industry. Coal's been the defining way of life for this state since, well, it was a state. Rich, pure, big chunks of Appalachia coal. Ah. If you live in West Virginia, there's a 100% chance that you or someone you know worked in the coal industry. I mean, even going back to the 1950s, one in five people were in coal. But coal isn't as profitable or plentiful as it once was here. No, West Virginia hitched its wagon on coal a long time ago, but that wagon's now left the wagon garage. Because of that, there's a lot of people here worried about their future. It truly is a sad, sad tale. But we'll get to that later, because West Virginia has a lot more than just coal mines. It's also mountains, some of the prettiest mountain ranges you've ever seen. And there's some cities here, and some form of entertainment, I know. But the best way to get to know a state is by going around to its various regions. That way, if you're thinking about moving here, you'll know what to expect. And yes, believe it or not, some people think West Virginia is Western Virginia. No, it's really a state, people. I swear. This is West Virginia. Now, as you can see, this state is a ton of mountains, coal mines, poor people, and a few cities of note. But there's actually some pockets in this state that are thriving. Kinda. And if West Virginia is a mountain state, the people who live there are mountain people, right? You can call them mountaineers, but they're not all straw hat wearing, banjo picking, overall wearing yokels. There's hardly any of that here. For example, we're going to begin up here in the far northern part of the state. West Virginia isn't really a southern state, but it's not midwestern either. It certainly isn't in the east, but it's not really in the north. It's just Appalachia. It truly is in its own little corner of the country. In fact, West Virginia is the only state that's completely in Appalachia. But different parts of the state take on their own regional characteristics. For example, up here in the northern part of the state, it's not as mountainous as other parts. Way up here, the culture is more like that of Pennsylvania than anything else. This little notch here, way at the top of the state, is what's called the northern panhandle. The weird shape of land exists because of some land disputes going back a long time ago that we won't get into. But there's actual people way up here wedged between Ohio and Pennsylvania. Many people can actually get to Pittsburgh in under an hour. So there's a decent job potential. This area also has a lot of abandoned manufacturing communities like other parts of the Rust Belt too. Wheeling is the largest city in the northern panhandle. There's 27,000 people there. Wheeling is your typical smallish West Virginia town run down in a Rust Belt sort of way. It looks like your typical Rust Belt has-been place you'd see in Ohio or Pennsylvania. That's because it sort of is in Ohio and Pennsylvania. They're excited about the future of the Northern Panhandle because of a recent oil and gas boom up here. But as we'll soon see with the coal industry, putting all your marbles into energy is a dangerous proposition. If you're into the energy sector and want to live in this part of the state, it's cheap. 133000 gets you your average house. Most of the rest of the Panhandle is small aging communities where jobs left long, long ago. But here down a little lower in the state, there's actually a few places that kind of have a lot going on with some new jobs and some new home communities sprouting up. This whole area here in north central West Virginia is sort of prospering, but not really booming. This is Clarksburg. Clarksburg is not really part of the prospering part, though. It's a pretty run down place. There really aren't any nice areas to live here in Clarksburg among 15,000 other people. But right next door to Clarksburg is Bridgeport. They're only 10 minutes apart, but Bridgeport is way nicer in terms of quality of homes and lifestyle. In fact, you could say Bridgeport might be one of the nicest places to live in the whole state. This is where the richest people in the whole state live anyways, statistically, where people make about 80 k a year. I know that's not a lot, but it's West Virginia. There's actually some decent jobs around here in tech and healthcare. A home here is about 220 k which is about double the state average. Up I-79, even closer to Morgantown, is Fairmont, which is also a good place to live. And outside of Morgantown, on the north side, is Cheat Lake, which is also a good place to live. And by nice place to live, I mean pretty safe, where there's newer homes that aren't falling down, and where there's 
kind of stuff to do. Morgantown's a bright spot in this part of the state. There's 30,000 people here, making it the third biggest city in this whole damn place. It's home to the University of West Virginia. WVU is a big deal in this state, and most folks are big fans of its football and basketball teams. Morgantown is mostly a college town. There's a lot of drinking and restaurants and some actual culture. I mean, this university once ranked as the biggest party school in the nation, folks. There's a good music scene here, and there's local artists. Homes here are in the 225K-ish range, but there's some nice parts of town where you get closer to the 300K range. Morgantown's really trying to grow economically, and they're trying to shed their dwindling blue-collar roots. Half the jobs here in Montegalia County are white-collar types, stuff like management, education, and law. Healthcare's a big deal here. Ruby Hospital was called the best hospital in the whole state, and it's right here in Morgantown. But West Virginia ranks in the bottom 10 for hospital care overall, which is sad. In a super red state, this is the least conservative of all places you can live in West Virginia. Trump only won this county by one percentage point, which is by far the closest of any other county here. It's also the most diverse part of this whole state, Morgantown is. This part of the state up here is actually growing, and it's really one of the few places here that's growing. Over the last decade, there were only three states which lost people, Illinois, Mississippi, and West Virginia. Illinois and Mississippi barely lost any people, but West Virginia lost a whopping 3% of its population. It's becoming one of the oldest states, and there's really nothing here to attract a younger population either. Another part of the state that's doing sort of well is the eastern side of the state, or the eastern panhandle. Anything east of Route 522, where the state kind of squeezes together here and east of that is sort of like Maryland-ish. Lots of people out this way live in newish communities and they drive into Maryland or D.C. for work. There's actually some sort of growth out this way too, in places like Morgan and Berkeley and Jefferson counties. This might just be the least country bumpkin part of this whole state outside of Morgantown. Places like Berkeley Springs, Martinsburg, Shepherdstown, and Hedgesville, they're all places with under 2,000 people and cute little downtowns. Charlestown has close to 6,000 people, and it's too a good place to live. Harper's Ferry is widely considered one of the neatest little towns in West Virginia. There's only a few hundred people way down here at the tip of the state, but it's full of culture and a ton of Civil War history. It's going to be real cheap living out this way, too. Taxes are really low, and homes are in the 300,000-ish range. That might be expensive for West Virginia standards, but come on now. This part of the state's also good because it has three of West Virginia's ski resorts, some of which are cool little hidden gems out in the middle of nowhere. I know about one, but I'm not going to tell you about it because I don't want you to ruin it. Many of West Virginia's natural wonders are also in this part of the state, including Blackwater Falls. If you moved to West Virginia, you'd see a lot of churches everywhere. The state ranks 7th overall for the percentage of people who are highly religious. I mean, it's West by God Virginia out this way. It's a slow-paced life out here too. While there aren't a ton of high-paying jobs, and this is one of the least educated states, they're more of a life skill smart here. They're great with weapons, building fires without a match, building places without nails, surviving off the land, and working on cars. Hunting, of course, is a big deal in West Virginia. For many people, it's their survival. If you moved here, don't be shocked if you hear about people eating coon, rabbit, chipmunk, squirrel, beaver, possum, bird, aardvark, platypus, ferret, porcupine, armadillo, or skunk. This video brought to you by Mike's Barbecue. On Route 19 in Flat Claw. Come on down, we got some great food. That's Mike's Barbecue. They also love hot dogs, but their favorite thing to eat are these pepperoni rolls. <laughs> these might be the reason many people here are overweight. They're pretty addicting. They also drink a lot of moonshine, which for some people is addicting too. While the indoor entertainment in this state's certainly wanting, there's endless outdoor stuff for those who are motivated. Many are not motivated. But with all the whitewater rafting, kayaking, skiing, rock climbing, hiking, mountain biking, and off-roading there is to do here, you would be looked at strangely if you told your new neighbor you were bored. Of course, there's some bad sides of this state, which we will now get into. West Virginia has a well-earned reputation as being a redneck living, tobacco spitting, diesel pouring, Jesus loving, minority hating, beer drinking, pill popping kind of place. And there's no better place to find those types of folks than down here in southern West Virginia. There's a whole lot to talk about down here, boy, I tell you that. And this isn't going to be easy, nor will it be flattering, folks. It's actually pretty sad. And it all centers around coal. I'm proud to be a coal miner's daughter. 
The original term for redneck began here in West Virginia. Back in the early 1900s, the coal miners here used red bandanas to protect their faces from the coal dust. The term redneck stuck. Coal miners here have been living up to that moniker ever since. Coal's been a blessing and a curse to West Virginia. Forever now, it's how the state made a lot of money. But it's dying now. There's less workers needed to get the coal. There's less coal to mine. And we're quickly moving away from using coal. And as coal's dwindling, so are the state's fortunes. West Virginia has what demographers call the resource curse. The phenomena where places with an abundance of natural resources have less economic growth, less democracy, and worse development outcomes. We see the same thing in Louisiana. Today, coal is still 20% of West Virginia's economy. I mean, you can't farm here. But despite the writing on the wall, the state still props up the coal industry instead of diversifying its economy. People have freaked out. If working in a coal mine was all you knew, and coal was the only thing that put food on your table, what do you think they're going to do? Learn a new trade? No, they vote Republican. That's what they do. Politics-wise, this part of the state is the deepest shade of red. There are some hardcore conservatives down here, at least in terms of their voting patterns. McDowell County down here went 76% to Trump in the 2020 election. Of course, much of that was because of coal, but they're also going to want to defend their gun rights, and many people here are very much against immigration. There's also a pretty big anti-minority, anti-gay vibe down here in this part of the state. It's also very white down here too. As the state, West Virginia is the third whitest state of all at 92%. Now, West Virginia used to vote blue every election, mainly because of the labor unions that supported the coal industry. But then there was a decline in the unions here. Despite the fact that Democrats stand up for the working poor, for the disabled and the drug addicted, well, they still vote red down here. If it wasn't for coal, you could say a lot of people down here were voting against their own self-interest. But they're close-minded and stubborn down in these parts, I'll tell you that. Often to a fault. What's also interesting about the deep redness of this state is the whole Confederate flag thing you see flying all over West Virginia. I mean, West Virginia became a state because it was against the South seceding and fought against the South in the Civil War. But they don't really seem to care about that much here today. Of course, another huge problem with southern West Virginia is the epidemic of drug use. In the early 2000s, doctors here began prescribing opioids at an astronomical rate. At one point, pharmaceutical companies sent 400 pain pills to West Virginia for every person living here. As a result, a lot of these coal miners and a lot of other people got hooked on drugs. And tons of people down here are now struggling to cope with that. And for many down here, their whole day is spent trying to get their hands on pills. And it's a problem among teenagers as well. An example is this place called Oceana, home to 1,300 people. They call it Oxiana because of the sheer number of people hooked on opioids. Many southern West Virginians are also very poor. Middle class in West Virginia as a whole is 20k a year, but a lot of people down in southern West Virginia make way less than that, sometimes $100 a week. A lot of people down here grow up in these tiny towns with dirt roads and these haulers, and they hunt to save money. They get their clothes at yard sales, and sadly, a lot of kids don't have a lot of toys. It's really sad. West Virginia is sadly at the top for bad categories and towards the bottom for good categories. It's an unhealthy population where Walmart and fast food are the go-to options for dinner. West Virginia is second in obesity and second in smoking rates. West Virginia is also 45th in education. Only 2% of West Virginians polled said they believe their own public school system is good. Only Mississippi ranks worst overall in many important categories. West Virginia might be 49th, but at least they aren't 4010th. As a result of all of this, a declining coal industry, extreme poverty, a lack of jobs, and the drug epidemic is part of the state's shedding people in droves. The ones who don't leave stick around for family mostly. Many are too poor to leave and need family to lean on, or they don't want to leave their poor family members behind. The West Virginia stereotype is one of shoeless, cousin-marrying hicks who live in trailer parks. This stereotype was perpetuated by the media, who forever portrayed rural Appalachia as a place where people wear dirty clothes and had no shoes. The public's image about West Virginia and Appalachia in general appears to be stuck in the 1950s. Sure, in many parts of southern West Virginia, it is like that. And sure, there's a hillbilly redneck thing here in much of the state, which a lot of West Virginians take pride in. It's who they are. Come on now. And that whole marrying your cousin thing is just a joke. In reality, marrying your first cousin is illegal in West Virginia. But it is legal in 20 other states like California, New York, and Massachusetts, just saying. Of course, it's not all bad here in southern West Virginia. There's some okay areas too, like there's Summersville, a cute little mountain town here. And there's the New River Gorge, 
which is totally awesome. Some really pretty areas in West Virginia, I tell you. And now we're going to go to the western side of the state. This part of the state is much different than the rest of the state. A lot of terrains more like eastern Kentucky and southern Ohio more than anything else. There's two major cities here, but they aren't necessarily big places. Charleston's here. It's the state capital, but there's only 48,000 people here and dropping fast. Downtown Charleston's uninspiring for the most part. It's pretty rough in many areas and sort of sleepy, and there's a fair amount of homeless in the area. South of town, down by the hospital here is nice, as is Edgewood here. And East End, the South Hills area is nice here across the river. In South Hills, some homes sell for like five to 600K, some for even a mill. And they're trying really hard to get people to move to Charleston and this state in general. They're paying people 12 grand to move there and specifically targeting remote workers. So get in on that, people. This area over here is Putnam County and it's actually pretty nice. Areas like Hurricane and Tays Valley are nice safe places without drugs and crime like you'll find in Charleston or in Huntington over here. Huntington is full of drugs, it's run down, and has the second highest crime rate in the state. It's just about as big as Charleston, but way worse in terms of quality of life. You could say a lot of Huntington's ghetto, and they couldn't argue about that. Don't move to Huntington. But Marshall University's here, so at least there's that. If you have to live in the Huntington area, pick Barbersville. It's much safer, cleaner, and less icky. And finally, we have Parkersburg, which has a rust beltish vibe, and it's home to a bunch of oil and gas jobs. It too has a major problem with drugs and crime. Sorry, Parkersburg. West Virginians have been routinely cast as victims, locked in a struggle that's out of their control. The reality is many folks here are hardworking, and they're down to earth, and they're resourceful. They're often loyal and gritty, and sometimes too proud for their own good. Most West Virginians have little in terms of wealth, but many are generous. Although, lots of folks here would take their poor mountain towns over the chaos of big liberal city governments. And while jobs are hard to come by in a lot of areas here, it's a really peaceful place. You can't put a price on peace and quiet. But they're going to have to stop letting their state be defined by its most impoverished regions and stop driving away economic opportunities so these struggling communities can change their fortunes. Nobody wants to visit much less move to, an area that appears to be in the throes of economic decline. Right now, it's pretty hard to be optimistic about this state's future, unless they diversify soon and go through some big changes. I think they can do it. I'm pulling for you, West Virginia. I mean, you have some of the prettiest mountains, rivers, and valleys in the whole world. You have so many wonderful outdoor opportunities. And you're the home of bluegrass. And everybody wants to be outdoors these days. We want space. West Virginia could be a great place to raise a family one day. God love them. Okay, so that was a pretty good rundown of West Virginia, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It's a pretty nifty state, huh? And we didn't even have time to talk about everything. Like, how did we not talk about the Green Bank Observatory? Hello, it's like the world's largest radio observatory. Nor do we have time to talk about the world-class rapids here. Some real good whitewater rafting in the state. But it's time to go. Maybe one day, West Virginia will be your home too. It'd be a perfect place for you if you have a little hillbilly in ya. Jump into the truck, way into the back, gonna head into the hills and try to score some crack. Everything you hear, we're really redneck here. Beers, 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 and we're gonna shoot a deer. Come over to the trailer, tell me what you see. Country music playing, sitting on the swing. Blam, 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 make you feel my gat. And if you take my pills, you better watch your back. Cause they get Billy on it, they get Billy on it, and he'll Billy on it. They get Billy on it, they get Billy on it, they get Billy on it. So he'll Billy on it, go get Billy on it. They get Billy on it, and he'll Billy on it. So he'll Billy on it, go get Billy on it. They get Billy on it, they get Billy on it. So he'll Billy on it, go get Billy. Hey guys, so if anything I just talked about upset you or made you sad or mad, well then do something about it. Call your local leaders and demand change. Chip in and help those in need. Make your community better. Because communities don't get better without hard work and determination. America's a great place. It just needs some more love and pride. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? 
I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. So drugs, how bad is it getting down there with, with drug use, opioids, heroin, all that stuff? In the southern part of the state, probably in the early 2000s or so, whenever everyone looked at uh, your opioids as miracle drugs and stuff like that, um, it depends on what area of the state you live in. If you're in rur more rural areas, it's it gets worse, of course. Um, it's normal for certain areas like that to uh, leave something out at night and the next morning or a few minutes later, it might uh, it might disappear. It just uh, it all depends on what community you live in, what county you live in, stuff like that. But uh, some places are a lot better than others. Yeah, I mean, and and they're stealing for drugs. I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, it can be anything from bicycles from children to uh, get from point A to point B, or just power tools or whatever whatever actually they can get their hands on easily. Yeah. Like a day-to-day -day survival thing. Like I got to get my fix today. So I got to get some money somehow. Yeah. How desperate are the people down there in some of these small towns and rural West Virginia down there in these coal mining towns? Well, a lot of them are just, a lot of them are just trying to scratch out a living because there's no other work. I mean, some of these people, they've spent, you know, five, 10, up to 30 years or more underground. And if a mine shuts down or something like that, it's, this is literally all I know is mine and coal. I mean, that's what a lot of them just say. And if a mine shuts down or something like that, they don't know what to do. I mean, it's, it's actually heartbreaking because I spent nine years in the industry myself and uh, I've seen a lot of changes just in the short period of time I was in there and uh, just seeing, you know, somebody that's either at the peak of their working uh, career or somebody that's getting ready to retire or something like that. And, hey, he has to go home and tell his wife, Hey, I'm sorry, but I got cut today and has to start all over from scratch. So, so some people are more fortunate than others. Like how are they more fortunate? Well, I mean, in the coal mining industry, you, you operate anything from heavy machinery to, um, if you have management experience, construction related experience, stuff like that, I was fortunate enough to uh, transition into the chemical industry. So where I had a little bit of a management experience, a little bit of equipment experience and stuff like that. And working in the mines around here, if, if you work in the mines, a lot of people know that you're a hard worker. That's, that's the mindset. And what was really good for us was at the downturn of the industry, we had companies coming in saying, Hey, did you work, you know, how long did you work underground or are you a coal miner or whatever? And uh, mining experience, a lot of them would put in their job description is a plus. And that helped a lot of us out. Yeah. But then so you also had your smaller group that said, I'm just waiting on the market to improve and I'm going straight back or they might transition into a different job. And once the market picked up, then they were going out and going back into the mines and uh, buying a new 50 to $70,000 truck and starting all over again. It was something I scratched my head at and I said, you know, that's, if I was you, I'd be, you know, it's none of my business, but you might want to look at, uh, look at the longer term future. Yeah. So what do most people do when they lose their jobs at a coal mine? First thing they'll do is uh, after cleaning out their lockers and stuff, they'll file for unemployment. And a lot of times, if you're lucky enough, you might find another place that's uh, you might be able to find another place that's hiring or something like that. Like but, another coal mine, you mean? Yeah. But I mean, that's getting rare anymore. I mean, 10 years ago, if one shut down, you could literally almost go down the road five or 10 miles and another place was hiring and there'd be flyers everywhere and stuff. It's picking up right now, especially in the metallurgical market, but the steam market's pretty much decimated because everybody's switching over to natural gas and alternative mm -hmm. energy. So 
why don't all the coal miners go and start working in the gas and oil industry in the state? Well, they did that years ago and about 2015 or so, whenever gas prices started dropping, they, uh, the gas, gas started, uh, they started cutting back and stuff like that. That was around the time I started in the coal industry and, uh, they started cutting back workers and stuff like that. People would either go to the chemical industry or they go out of state. They just literally look for whatever they could put their hands on. What's the state going to do for employing its people and to get all the money they need to run the state? Well, we've had, uh, most recently we had a methanol plant come in here about five years ago. It's in the Institute area. And, uh, we've had a few other places come in, stuff like that. Um, I've actually reached out myself last year to a few politicians that's in the area and, uh, some of them would actually get on social media or come out and meet up, stuff like that. And they would ask, you know, what are we looking for as far as uh, what they want us, you know, what they want to help us with? And I told them one thing we need to do is make the state more business friendly and hopefully we can attract new workers and hopefully we can attract more companies that want to invest in the state. And that's been our biggest struggle because here recently, probably about a week or so ago, uh, we actually started losing, we lose about 18 to 20,000 people a year, but uh, we actually lost a congressional seat in the process here this past year. Mm -hmm. That really hurt. Yeah. And do you have any, you know, big political superstars at the, you know, DC level that can stand up for your state and try to fight to get you guys hooked up with a better future? We have Joe Manchin, but I mean, a lot of it's just my opinion. This is just my two cents. A lot of it's just your typical politicians, you know, vote for me and I'll tell you whatever. And, yeah. you know, it all just depends on what you're going to get. I hope, I hope them representing our state personally, I hope they would, you know, they take our state into consideration and, you know, Hey, we need to uh, help our state out and stuff like that. But that's just my opinion. I, I really can't further comment on it because I don't know what they do up there. Yeah. What's the outlook among people in your state? How do they feel about the future of West Virginia? A lot of them depends on who you ask. A lot of people, they just, a lot of younger people, they don't really see a whole lot here. My personally, my wife and I, we were, uh, we were, debating with ourselves a few years back on going to somewhere like Texas, but West Virginia is home to me. And as long as I'm able to uh, scratch out a living here and, you know, do what I can to make a future for myself and my family, I'm willing to stay here and stick it out because I love my state and I really want to see it grow and do what I can to, you know, help it, help it along. But myself, I can't do, I, I can, I'm only limited in what I can do. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've reached out to other businesses. I've reached out to politicians. Hey, you ever thought about investing in our state? Stuff like that. Just anything I can think of. But I mean, me personally, it's going to take more than just me. It's going to take politicians, leaders, and stuff like that. It's it's going to take everybody just to get together and do it. Mm -hmm. So your work at the hospital. Can you talk about the the? Uh, drug epidemic in your state? Are you seeing that in your hospital? Is it like a thing that the doctors talk about? Are they, what what's going on there? Well, we definitely really realize that it's it's a, it's an ongoing issue. I think what happened, I can tell you, like from the medical standpoint, the background from what how I understand it, is that in the early two thousands they started taking like educating doctors that pain is another vital sign, you know, and, and with the smell side is like. And that was uh, the idea was that doctors really not treating the pain appropriately as they should. And the consensus was, let's start treating the pain more appropriately and give more prescription medications. And then this is when people got more addicted to the pain painkillers. Pain and then they realized that, oh, we've created that's a huge problem. Now the, the, the pendulum swung back. But unfortunately, once you do one way, then it's really hard to to win people off. They so so far. I cannot really tell you like if it's getting better or worse or it's about the same, but I can tell you that it's, it's still definitely it's still a, it's still a problem for sure. Yeah, but like it's like high school kids that are popping pills 
they weren't over prescribed from doctors back in 20 years ago when they were giving out 80 pills a week to people. I mean, these are 20, 13, 14 year old kids that are getting strung out on opioids. Where's, how did that, is that because their parents were doing it? Like, how does that become a thing? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I think, like, definitely the family dynamic, you can tell, like, if parents are struggling, then the kids are definitely more likely to to develop the same kind of problems. It's, of course, it's uh, it's certain. But in terms of, like, how the kids got access to that, I'm really not sure. I see, to be honest, I see more uh, this to be a problem with older folks rather than younger. Because I'm a family medicine, I'm not a pediatrician, so, so to speak. But I see kids as well, and... Uh, I don't see that it's a huge issue amongst kids as it is like among older adults who have like a chronic pain and it's hard to wean them off. And uh, but I can tell you, like when I was a pathology resident uh, back in, in in Morgantown, um, definitely there were cases of very young people overdosing, unfortunately, um, because the drugs were prevalent. But I, I think it all comes down from the, you know, the parents use and they die young and then kids, even though they're supposed to realize that this is what the parents died from, I should stay away from it. It does not unfortunately work that way. It do doesn't seem to work as a deterrent for them to like to, to have a different behavior. Yeah, but they're not like, they're not over prescribing. Like I hear it's really hard to get opioids now than it used to be. Um, but they're all still doing it. You mean uh, the 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 people find the the drugs somewhere? Yeah, like the, the the pills, all the stuff that they do. Like it's like much harder to find in some of these remote areas than it used to be. But they're all still doing it anyway and getting them, however they get them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and to be honest, like I don't know how they get them. They like how because we are always like uh, as as physicians, we're always required. Like when you prescribe controlled substances, they're supposed to come very frequently. We check the urine to make sure that they're compliant. They're not taking anything they're not supposed to. They're taking what they're supposed to. And uh, we, we monitor them. So, and we give them like only one month refill. We don't give them too much, you know. We don't cut them loose for too long. Um, so, but they still some. And we frequently, we fire people from practices when we see that their urine is not positive. They were, or they like, they don't come for their urine drug tests. It's, it's the grounds, definitely. We fire people all the time for that. So, Firing doctors? No, no, no. The doctors, it's, it's a slang term. It's like we are firing patients from the from the clinic. Basically, we tell them we cannot prescribe you any more controlled substances. Sorry, you violated right. the contract. Okay. So, like, it used to be they would overprescribe people opioids and give them, like, 80 a week to take. And now you're the opposite, where they have to take P tests to prove they're not over consuming pain pills. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. And is that helping? Like, I, I, I mean, it, they call it an epidemic in West Virginia with the, with the drug use. It seems like you guys are doing your best to keep it from becoming that, but it's still a thing. Well, sure. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, definitely. It's, it, it's still, yeah. And, uh, Sometimes, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's really difficult to, sometimes it's really difficult to explain to people that whatever they used to, it's, it's not doing them uh, good in the long term. Sometimes they're understanding and sometimes it's, uh, it's, uh, they're, they're less understanding and they may get upset with you as a physician and say like, well, I'm going to leave. But uh, I always try to explain that this is what, you know, that's what happened. And this is what we're like, that's why the rules are so strict. That's why we monitor you. And when people, uh, agreeable i i try to win them off of the control substances always mm -hmm. so so drug use is it is it becoming worse is it getting better what's it like with the with it, the overdoses and the drug use in in your area it's pretty bad basically almost no one can pass a drug test i mean i'm one of the only clean people that i know i don't do any drugs so basically um it seems like about 70% of the population around me seems to do drugs or acts like they do anyways. There was a, a Walmart that's 20 miles up the road. Whenever they were trying to open, they couldn't they couldn't open yet because no one could pass a drug test. So they had to like get rules to and get things approved to where they can open it because no one could really pass a drug test. So, yeah, it's it's really bad up here. But you know hopefully we could try to get that cleaned up i have no clue what the future of west virginia is going to be like but i mean 
hopefully with all this renewable energy and all these different things, we can start to bring back our state a good bit. We've basically been falling since the 50s and the 80, ever since the 80s, we've really started falling bad. You know, you see lots of infrastructure going away, houses rotting and falling to the ground. And, you know, it's like a lot of things are disappearing here, which, you know, it's it's kind of sad. You know, lots of history is going away and it's just, you know, hopefully we can get ourselves back on our feet and, you know, start improving. Yeah, I, that would be good. Um there's a lot of parts of this country that are going through what you guys are going through. Um, so Walmart had to bend rules to allow people to, so they could get people to work there. Like what did they like loosen that's, their drug rules? That's what I heard. I, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. I just heard someone say that, which, you know, is pretty easy to believe here in West Virginia. I mean, it seems like everyone just, you know, lots of people to do drugs around here and whatnot there's not really much better for them that they think i mean you know you you do have a lot of the outdoors people that you know are not really into that like me but you know a good bit of people here are you know they just don't know what to do with themselves so in high school when you get to high school a lot of people are already doing drugs like big time like a yeah. lot of people yeah like like I've noticed some people that look completely different from when they started high school to when they graduate high school. It like completely changes them and all of that. And, you know, we also, because of that, we also have a really bad rate of uh, people having children at young ages. You know, there's, there's all kinds of people my age and younger that already have a family and whatnot. And, you know, with them struggling financially themselves, it's just making it really hard on them. I couldn't imagine raising a child making hardly any money. No, and being on drugs. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy what goes on here. I feel sorry for a lot of these children that have to grow up with that and through that. And unfortunately, they they adopt their parents' bad habits. And, you know, that kind of stuff happens to them. So it's, you know, it's not very good. And hopefully we can figure out some way to fix this. When I was five, we moved here and it took me a while to adjust. And, you know, there were times I thought negative about West Virginia because, you know, people always talk so bad about it and whatnot. And I always heard other places was so better. But whenever I actually moved out to Missouri and Pennsylvania, that kind of changed my mind. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely glad to be living here in West Virginia. So what is it you like about your state besides the really pretty, I mean, it's gorgeous state, yeah. um, the mountains and the lake. I mean, it's very beautiful. Besides the nature, what do you like about your state? Well, I basically like how there's lots of freedom and how people generally don't care what all you really do. Like, basically, we love to ride side by sides all the time. We ride down one lane and two lane roads to get on different trails and stuff. And it don't really seem like they're strict or really care about it. You know, they have some laws about like not being on roads and stuff like that. But, you know, generally, as long as you're not doing anything crazy or on a big freeway, they generally don't care. Just, you know, don't do anything stupid and drive safe and they'll be fine with it. You know, especially mm -hmm. the port where I live at, we basically go on like 50 mile long side by side rides, which is pretty cool. I don't think there's many other states on the East Coast where you could really do that and be okay with it. Yeah. So get pickup trucks, side by sides, four wheeling, uh, going out shooting guns, hanging yeah. out in the hills in the rural part of the of the state uh, where you're at. That's yeah. what you, that's what you like to go out into nature. But that brings me back to nature, like you know. You're, it's a beautiful state where there's a lot of space where you can kind of get back and do whatever you want. Um, that's what, that's mostly what you're into. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now for, yeah. 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 Um, now for a family who wants to move there and raise a family that isn't into that, where would they want to go? Well, for that, I'd say probably try around Charleston or Putnam County. One of the only counties that are really growing right now is Putnam County. You also have counties close to D.C. up in that eastern panhandle that are growing and are decent for families as well. But 
for people to try to raise a family around here in central West Virginia, it'd be kind of hard. And the thing is jobs, we're doing really bad with the jobs and the economy and whatnot. I have a CDL and I'm trying to get a truck driving job, but with my age, it's been really hard for me to find one, unfortunately, especially with all the coal mines shutting down and everything like that. So did you ever work in the coal mines? No, I All live right. near them, though. There's a town called Urbake in 10 miles east of where I live at. That's where we do a lot of side-by-side -side riding. Anyways, there's a coal mine near there, and unfortunately, it's shut down and reopened a few times, but it generally shuts down about a year after it reopens. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so jobs, unless you live on near Morgantown, the Charleston, the big cities, or you're in the, in the energy sector, or you're on the eastern side of the state over where you can get into like DC, or even up in the Wheeling area where you can get into Pittsburgh, there's really not a lot of good jobs unless it's like a hospital or like a government job. Yeah, I mean, basically, most of the jobs are on the edges of the states, like you said, Wheeling and Huntington and over towards DC, that's mainly where all the jobs are in West Virginia, where I live at, it's basically really hard to find a job and you know right now i'm 20 and i'm just i just got a new job i'm about to start working at a grocery store called kroger so um i'm hoping to do that till i can use my cdl so yeah okay. it's been a little crazy but you know i'm i'm doing all right so far not too bad so you, you should be a truck driver and c continue to live in west virginia like you're are you going to live there for ever probably i mean i had plans to move back to virginia a few times but i just you know never went through with it and you know i i like it here pretty well and i think i plan on staying here for at least a very long time so i don't plan on leaving anytime soon so you have a trump flag i, I know west virginia votes heavy red and has for a while but like What's interesting about that is, you know, it used to be a very democratic state with the coal mines and the unions. And then yeah. you hear people say that people in West Virginia are poor and they vote against their own interests, meaning like the whole like, you know, don't I don't want handouts. I don't want welfare, uh, you know, which is a Republican thing. But like West Virginians yeah. are poor. What is it about Trump and Republicanism that's so strong in that state? Well, so basically, I mean, we do vote some Democrat, you know, we got Joe Manchin we vote for. He don't seem like he's a bad guy. And uh, our governor now, Jim Justice, he used to be Democratic. And so basically what we look for is someone who cares about coal and our economy and don't get, doesn't go against our Second Amendment. That's one of the reasons why we all voted for Trump in all 55 counties this past election is because we all care about our guns and freedom and all of that. And we know his opponent was not so much for all of that. So it's coal and guns. Yeah, that's mainly it. And we're trying to, you know, get our economy fixed. The bad thing is we have some taxes that we don't really like, like our food tax. We tax our food and all other kinds of crazy taxes and whatnot that a lot of states don't have. But it's not way too bad. It's not like we have expensive property tax like we do and like they do in Virginia and Maryland and D.C. and places like that. Mm -hmm. So how how is West Virginia trying to get their economy fixed by getting away from coal? That's one thing that I start, I'm sorry to notice that we're trying to do. So we're trying to invest more in wind and solar energy. I think we could do really great with the wind energy, especially putting them on top of the mountains where there's lots of wind. There is a couple wind farms here in West Virginia around Randolph and Greenbrier County and some around Preston County as well. Um, they're, they do pretty well from what I see. There's all kinds of wind up there and all the turbines are always spinning, it seems like, whenever I pass by there. So I think wind energy would be a great investment for West Virginia. Yeah, no, I agree. There's other states. Wyoming is going through the same thing you're going through because, yeah. you know, the coal thing is just about had its time and they've been holding on to it 
as well forever. And they get a lot of wind and they're trying to invest in wind, but they're making it difficult for themselves because they're overtaxing the wind people that are trying to come in. And a lot of people don't want it because they're like, we don't want that. We want coal or we that's green energy. We're against that. <laughs> they're being stubborn about it. So, which um, I, I honestly like coal mines being around and I do like wind energy both. So I'm not against either of them on my side. Now you got a lot of people around here who are totally against wind energy and solar energy, which, you know, I I don't think they should be. I think we should try to invite that more into our state. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, do what you can. I mean, it's the future. We got to get on it. So like, what's it like, in a small town in West Virginia, like uh, the stereotype is unhealthy people, drug use, poor, um, stubborn, narrow-minded. I, I know that that's not nice yeah. to hear, but like that's what the stereotype is. You're going to have a lot of that in West Virginia, but like you're in a small yeah. town. Like tell tell people what it's like in a small town in West Virginia, the good and the bad. So basically, I'll I'll basically start out with the good side. You know, there is a lot of country folks and we, we have more of a diversity than what people think. Not everyone here is a bunch of crazy rednecks and whatnot, which there's good people that are crazy rednecks, if you know what I mean. You know, there's good kinds of all different people. And uh, yeah, I mean, basically, as long as you don't mess with anyone, they won't mess with you. And if you don't make any threats or anything, they'll be pretty nice to you and if you need help with something they'll be likely to help you out basically you just don't want to get on their bad side there is a few people that are pretty rude and you know are just really hard to get along with but for the most part as long as you're nice to them they'll be nice to you are people in small towns in west virginia what's their outlook on life well basically uh Basically, they think that everywhere else is just super strict and super crazy and horrible to live at. You know, they basically feel like West Virginia is the only good place in this country. So that's how a lot of people are that I notice. But, you know, I've traveled around the country a good bit. I've been to 30, 35 out of 50 states, been to the West Coast and back. And I've learned that there are places similar like us. You know, there's even parts of New York that are similar to West Virginia. You know, basically every state has its own similarity to, similarity to parts of West Virginia. It's just, you know, a lot of people don't see that. You know, a lot of people think all these other states and they just mainly think about the big strict cities and whatnot, thinking that's completely different from here. But there are parts of basically every state that's similar to West Virginia. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, there's similar... And there's there's big cities and small cities in every state, and I, there are similarities between where you are in upstate New York and parts of Pennsylvania and Ohio. Um, how do how do people in your small town feel about what's going on in, in America with the rioting, the the protesting, the burning that's going on in other areas? But like you know, I don't really hear about West Virginia people crashing windows and burning stuff um do they think we're all crazy well um so we don't really talk about that much you know i mean we talk about a little bit like we don't really not a whole lot of us get involved in that kind of stuff i mean there were a few people from west virginia who went to the capitol on january 6th which um you know I was thinking about going, but I would have never rioted or anything. I would have just been out there having a good time. I wouldn't have went out there to riot or anything. I would just, you know, been out there just to visit it and, you know, support Trump. Mm -hmm. So for the people that are living out in, the, in these hollers, these towns that are all beat up, maybe they're in trailers or just a small home, scraping by, how much does it cost a month for them to make enough money that, they can keep a roof over their heads and food. I'd say, well, there's a lot of different calculations, but I'd say for someone to be able to live decent here in West Virginia, you'd probably have to make around two grand a month. I'd say to live a decent life. So 
what about the people that don't that live in like a camper or they maybe they're living in mom's house and they don't have to pay for rent or a mortgage how much money do you think they need to get by uh, a week for what they do probably i'd probably say if it's just for like your own basically basically utilities and whatnot you'd probably need about 100 a week and we're involve stuff like that, you know, basically for food and utilities for just right. one person. So like a hundred bucks a week uh, to pay the bills, get some food on the table, drink maybe some beer. Um, and th that's for the people that aren't strung out on drugs. Yeah. So a hundred bucks a week, just go out and hustle and make a hundred bucks a week. Keep your life going. What about for the people that are strung out? How much do they need a week to keep their lifestyle going? Um, you, you mean like people who just basically live like normal lives? No, like the people that, well, is that normal for West Virginia? I mean, like the people that are not leading normal lives in, in, in terms of like the reality of the world where. Yeah, yeah I'd say, uh, I'd say a lot of people get by with a hundred bucks a week. Okay. 